Yum yum, it's a fair hate. One of the great things about being on YouTube is the comment section lights up and there's always, I don't know, every couple of weeks there's somebody who just goes off. I'm going to give you all a piece of advice out there for anybody who wants to like do negative comments or whatever. I've been doing this for almost 10 years. I've probably heard what you said and I've probably tried to respond with video and um, <clears throat> this is no different. So I'm going to show a couple of the, later on I'll show some of the comments. Uh, this is all around trajectory. So the last standing thing that everyone says is, them heavy arrows have terrible trajectory. And if you shoot those arrows on your current sights for your Twizzler stick, it will look like the arrows falling out of the sky. However, I have what's called data and pictures, you know, big chief tablet kind of stuff. And I will explain why the trajectory, I don't know, concept, fallacy is just that. Especially since it's uh, like Thomas Sowell. There's no perfect solutions. There's only trade-offs. And the trade-off for, for theoretically better trajectory is uh, straw man. Stay tuned. Okay, well, I'm always kind of exploring stuff. And I always thought that the trajectory argument that heavy arrows shot a long way have a uh, less forgiving trajectory curve than a fast arrow. And I did actually believe that at one time. I thought the trade-off would be downrange energy, FOC creates aerodynamic stability, FOC creates on impact projectile stability. That's all facts from NASA and physics and engineering. Okay. And I always, years ago, when I first started doing this, and I started to see wow factor when my arrows went flying through animals that I had shot with a lot of other stuff, like leaving smoke behind them and just went, I don't understand why that's happening. And I started exploring it back in my head. This is since been, <laughs> I was wrong. I always thought you just accepted the poor trajectory and you wanted the downrange energy, the awesome aero flight, and the mass to help with penetration at long distance. However, that has not proven to be correct because a light projectile like 430 grain arrows and a 650 grain arrow fly on completely different trajectory curves. One, the heavier arrow tends to be more of a consistent parabola and a fast arrow tends to go like this and fall off and gets eaten alive by aerodynamic drag down range. I have multiples of videos showing the speed erosion, the loss of kinetic energy, the loss of momentum at long range. And this mostly comes at me from the Western people who have decided that 40 yards isn't close enough. They need to shoot out to 70 or 80 yards. And they're shooting at mule deer, which are big, and elk, which are even bigger. And the trade-off for theoretical better trajectory is lower downrange momentum and lower downrange kinetic energy, meaning on target the uh, those lighter arrows don't have as much momentum or kinetic energy. Here's a couple of graphs. This is the graph of the kinetic energy at launch. And you can see this subset of arrows goes from 388 grains up to 718. You can see that the launch kinetic energy is basically flat. 
but at 60 yards, you see an ever, here comes the graph, an ever increasing, a closer gap between the launch and then the kinetic energy downrange is actually better for the heavier projectiles once it gets there. So when you go to a much lighter arrow, theoretically you are shooting a flatter shooting arrow that's more forgiving. You have given up an arrow on target performance energy. So theoretically the performance to get there is better, but once it gets there, all the energy graphs say you have a lower potential performing projectile. And I, I'm philosophically honest to tell you that if you hit it vertically between the ribs every time, a really light arrow is going to penetrate like crazy. But if it doesn't, <laughs> eh, depends on what you hit. Pull the shot a little bit, wind blows, you miscalculate how much downhill it was. There's a lot of shooting errors that can occur um, hunting. It's just a very dynamic situation. And then don't talk about the animals moving because we don't want to talk about that. Next thing. Here's a couple of pictures of sight, multi-pin sights. This uh, graph, or excuse me, this set of pins is from an arrow in the, I don't know, mid 400s, if I remember correctly. And what you see is a slowly expanding pin gap as the arrow goes down range. So there's what, five or six pins there, so we're out to 60 or 70 yards on that pin set. And that means you've got to manage a consistently expanding gap, which means a higher error rate as you go down range and you're shooting a lighter projectile which does not have as much energy this next pin set is from i know for a fact a 70 pound matthews bow 29 inch draw it is the lightest arrow in my subset of data at 388 grains 75 or 100 grain point aluminum insert like a stock gold tip 300 May have been a 350, but I don't think it was. I know it was 388 grains, whatever it was. Look at the pin gaps. You can see the, the yardage markers on there, and you can see that arrow getting eaten alive by aerodynamic drag as you get past 50 yards. Remember, this is the rum pum pum guys who say, I'm going to shoot four, and that heavy arrow is a big old slug, and it, you know, fast arrows shoot flat. Those pins tell a completely different story. When I saw that, that was the beginning, this is years ago, I was like, what is, why is that happening? Then I got the lab radar, started measuring how much speed erosion there is as the arrow goes down range, because the drag equation has velocity squared in it. The faster you go, the drag squares with velocity and that square is drag. It's not a good thing. It's pulling on the arrow. Mass is in there and all this good stuff. Okay, real quick, and we'll continue with the next set of pins on a slower bow with a really heavy arrow. Your head's probably smoking a little bit right now um, because all arrows have drag. Heavy arrows have drag, light arrows have drag. But what the point of this discussion around drag is this. To go faster, because your bow is a fixed pressure tool, launcher, it's set at 65 pounds at 28 and a half inches, it doesn't have any more juice. So what is significant here and why this matters with the velocity squared against a light projectile that doesn't push on the atmosphere and as well and drags more because it's going faster is in archery, we lighten the projectile to go faster. That's the point of what I'm saying here. You take mass out, increase velocity, and the drag goes up because it's not very heavy. So that's the trade-off. You pull mass out, reduce downrange energy. You reduce downrange kinetic energy, downrange momentum, 
and increase drag velocity squared by lowering the mass. So it's two things not working in your advantage. Downrange, you get less energy, especially way out there, and the drag goes up because we choose to pull the mass out to go faster. It's just an equation, but uh, to a lot of people, this is kind of new information. And quite frankly, I didn't learn this like in the snap of fingers. It's been years. And then all of a sudden you just go, oh, I get it. Like, that's how this works. Silly math. Finally, here's a pin set. If I remember, Emily's arrow was 600 grains or so. And she was shooting like 45 pounds or something. It's maybe 610, somewhere in there. I know it's a like high FOC, like 30% FOC, like a really awesome hunting arrow. She shot Elin and all kinds of stuff with it. I am not going to show her picture because people don't like to be on Instagram but or YouTube or whatever we're on. Look at our pin gaps on this thing. We were talking about it and um, we compared it to a 240 foot per second easy V sight. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of that thing, but it's a V based on speed and the pins line out almost exactly as if that bow was shooting 240 and they chrono the bow and at the bow is launching at 200. The explanation for that is drag. It's a slow projectile, it's a heavy projectile, and it is flying on a much more consistent parabola. It doesn't go like this. I wanna show that pins, those pins from the 388 grain arrow. That arrow's flying really fast at first and then it, way out there, it is dropping like a rock. So if you make a two yard range estimation with a pin gap this wide, because your arrow's real light, then you're kind of screwed. But if your parabola is nice and consistent, again, here's those pins from 200 feet per second and 600 grains or so. And every pin is basically spaced out perfectly. And that's because the arrow flies on a very consistent parabola. May it have more arch like this? It does. But the pins from the 388 Grain Arrow tell a completely different story. It's like a comma on its side. That's the trajectory curve. Pretty flat, and then it just starts plummeting way out there. And that's hard to manage. And then you have a 388 Grain Arrow, and when it hits the elk at 65 yards, does it have any pop? The math says no. Here again is the graph. That arrow is in this subset of data. Here is the difference in kinetic energy and momentum for that 388 grain arrow. And then let's compare that to something moderately reasonable, okay? 650 is incredible. Everybody just wants to have the middle ground. So let's go somewhere in the 580s where it's pretty darn heavy and look at the difference in the momentum on that. So what you see is, back to what Thomas Sowell said, there's no perfect solutions, there's only trade-offs. So what we're doing in the archery industry is we're saying, my trade-off is, I think if the arrow hits them, it will penetrate. I think it will penetrate if I hit them. It's another way to say that. So I'm gonna shoot a very light projectile and hope to God I hit them because I believe it will be more forgiving if I make a mistake. The more heavy arrow enthusiasts, a lot of them have flipped the switch. I 100% have flipped the switch and realized I could practice. I could get some very precise uh, pin sights with incredible tapes on them down to the yard and I could practice with that projectile and shoot 60, 70 yards with it. And then it's on me as a shooting error. But with the higher downrange energy projectile, it is 
has a higher potential, especially with a very high quality broadhead that is efficient on impact, like a single bevel, with, you know, something really sharp, great steel, unforgiving, high structural integrity. Should there be an error down range of range estimation and you do, that means you didn't hit what you were intending to aim at, that arrow's got more energy down range to continue moving forward and be lethal. So that's plan B. Plan A, most people's arrows work. I'm not gonna tell you that they don't. But the trade-off, right, no perfect solution is you're willing to give up energy, aerodynamic stability, on-target stability through FOC for one thing, trajectory, and the belief that if it hits them, it will penetrate. And all you have to do is go to YouTube and watch about a thousand videos and watch the wildly varying arrow performance, deer, elk, moose, whatever. We should see arrows bury into the flesh every time at minimum. And the goal is always a pass through. So when you're, I guess people call me hard headed, stuck in my ways, you know, whatever. I believe what your goal, every shot, 25 yards, or 60 yards, should be the arrow passing completely through the animal. It's physiologically more sound. The broadhead will then penetrate every organ it could possibly hit. And there's a lot of medical science that says you do not want the arrow in the animal, including, and I'll finish with this, if you were on a job site and a shaft of metal got stuck in your chest, they would leave it in you until you got to the, until you got to the hospital, and then they'd pull it out where they have surgeons, blood. Oh, you might need some tools to cauterize things that are spraying blood everywhere. If you yank that thing out at the, at the job site, you could have all kind of problems that will kill you, but you m will likely survive the drive with a piece of metal sticking out of your chest to the hospital. And in fact, that is a very sound medical fact that a penetrating object stuck in somebody, they leave it, take you to the hospital. That way they can avoid collapse lung, well, not avoid, they can, they have the tools and the skill and the surgeons and everything else to handle what happens once they get it out of you, because obviously you don't want to live with a stick in your body, <laughs> that's inconvenient, infections and dirt, stuff like that, but second to that would be arteries, veins that are ruptured, but the, the they're pressed up against the steel, so they're not bleeding as bad, collapsed lungs, punctured livers, your guts could have big holes in them. And you wanna be in a hospital when they slide that thing out so that the people who know what they're doing can fix all that stuff and slow down your death. Okay, that's all I have to say about trajectory. There's no perfect solutions. There's only trade-offs. And I believe the trade-off should be practice the trajectory of a higher mass higher downrange energy projectile, perfect aero flight, incredible broadheads that are very efficient. And that's just the way I think, as opposed to when it hits them, it should penetrate. So I'm just gonna shoot the lightest arrow I can on the earth because theoretically it's more forgiving. Here's those pins of that 388 grain arrow again for you. Just something to think about. See you later.